Hi there, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman in the business today, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Hi, it's Avi Myers. How are you? Good morning, uh, Commissioner, and good morning, Alderman. Hi, I'm John. a uh, first-time caller, long-time listener. <laughs> Well, we're, we're, we're glad you're here, and we're glad that uh, Avi points out the yes vote for you and other judges running for retention. Correct, yes. Uh, yes on retention. I, I, uh, in early voting, uh, Judge, the, the one thing that uh, I kept hearing from the uh, people as they were coming out is they were overwhelmed by the number that they have had to vote for retention, and it's at the end. Uh, is it 74 judges? Approximately, yes. Yeah, and... I think one of the things we want to encourage people to do is to stay with the ballot and, and to vote these judges. And uh, the, the vast majority, 99.9 percent, .9 like Ivory Soap, are really qualified people. But it, it is, it is uh, really a, be a shame if the wrong people aren't retained. And that's why encouraging a yes vote is, is probably the only sane thing to do unless you really have time to do research. Well, and, and that's the thing. If people information is out there for people if they want to take the time to do it and research it that's great but as you said you know 99.9% .9 of the people that are on that ballot are very qualified people who do a, a terrific job every single day under the leadership of uh, our boss Tim Evans and uh, right it'd be a shame to lose some very qualified and very good people it, it's always bothered me how many the fall off that's always occurred particularly uh, at the end of the ballot and, and the judges, so many good, good, good qualified people who, who the, the public doesn't even vote for. You know, Bernie, I think uh, a lot of people, a lot of the public say, well, what do I know about judges? And, and when, I, when I talk to them, I say, well, what do you know about your state rep? What, what, what do you know about your state senator? Right. And I think sometimes when people say, I don't know a lot about the judges, so I'm not going to vote for them, I think, yeah, they're, they're kind of backing away from a, a decision. I think the information's out there and now with the uh, the internet, everyone becoming familiar with it. Uh, the newspapers, the bar associations do a wonderful job in terms of screening these candidates. That uh, you know, if, if they they take the time and, and go out and look at that information, they can make an informed decision. And Bill, I think I think it's just a, in most cases, I think it's an excuse. I think they're just plain lazy. Well, you know. I, it's, it's a personal decision with people, just as anything else. I mean, how, what are our, uh, what's the turnout looking like for general elections on the whole? You it's, know, we, we've been seeing a decrease in our in our turnouts. I think this year it's going to be a good turnout, a, a great turnout, and I'm just hoping that people will vote from top to bottom, uh, and I do mean from the top of the ticket to the bottom of the ticket. And I think it's going to be historic. It's yeah. just a historic election. I think everyone's excited about it. I think uh, the major candidates have run terrific campaigns, and uh, I think a lot of people will be getting to the poll. I hope so. Well, when I early voted, I had brought with me, and my wife had brought with uh, copies of the Bar Association ratings, and there were probably 100 people in line, and I think that those uh, ratings are still being recycled in that hallway because, <laughs> because in, in, you know, people want to take this very seriously. And this is, unfortunately, at the end of the ballot, People are tired, and, and they, when they see all these names, it's intimidating. But I think it's extremely important, one, not to just vote no. I've heard from a couple people that they just went in and voted no on everybody because they're mad at all incumbents. That's not the way to vote. 99.9% of these people are great, and it's so hard to give you the reasons for the one, that, that part of 1% who may have a problem that we try to explain. Uh, so that, you know, I think the yes campaign that... The judge's part of it is an important thing to do. It's a good thing. And, of course, I'll remind people also that if they'd like to pick up their free copy of Jewish Chicago, I have a panel of judicial and legal experts, of course, that, that rate them. And if they go to our show website, which is at ntnm.org, www.ntnm.org, we have interviewed actually 16 different judges this year on the show. And you can access all those files through YouTube. And at this point, I forget exactly. It's something like 47, 48,000 shows have been watched. I don't even remember the exact number, and it keeps climbing. We're, we're doing at least a thousand a week these days, and of course, uh, Judge O'Brien is one of the people that was interviewed together with uh, Judge Sutker Dermer. And, well, you uh, know, Javi, you, you, you uh, among other people, have provided great service and access to this information for people that, that uh, can again make a, an informed, reasoned decision, which they should. It's, it's their responsibility. It's it's what makes the system go. It's what makes the system work. It's what makes the system great. Yeah, I, 
I don't think people begin to realize how important the decisions are. The, 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 the decision you might make as a judge could affect people much more drastically than their state rep or state senator or congressman well, or whatever. You know, we deal with an awful lot of people on an awful personal level. So uh, you're correct. Our decisions uh, reach right into their lives. And uh, so what you want is you want uh, very smart people, very uh, talented people, very good people making those decisions. One of the things you pointed out to me when we actually talked off the year after year interview was that you were saying how that as a res that actually judges get to see things before the general public. You're seeing some of the results of society in, ter in terms of the poor economy and all the rest of it before. Sure. One, one of our, you know, <clears throat> when you sit on the bench and uh, especially when you're going through sentencing, you're looking for solutions. You're trying to uh, come up with decent resolutions and, and correct resolutions. And so with budget cuts and, and budgetary pressures, some of our tools in terms of uh, treatment especially, they're becoming more limited. Uh, we're also seeing an increase in terms of property crimes that come before us, uh, and even treatment of the mentally uh, uh, impaired, uh, more of those cases coming in front of us because of a lack of services that are being provided. What uh, sort of cases do you preside over? I'm pr currently presiding over City of Chicago, Northside Felonies, and I do that up at the Skokie Courthouse. Very good, and of course that's the one right off, um, right near Old Orchard, Old Orchard off, Road. off the expressway. And what is your punch number? Punch number is 230. And we tell you to punch it early and often, except that doesn't quite work. No, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, before you were a judge, you also had an excellent career in the state's attorney's office. Yeah, I had uh, one of my uh, one of my better partners that I had in my career was uh, Anita Alvarez. So Anita and I worked together. Uh, both on Girl X, and then Anita also was uh, my deputy when I was in charge of narcotics. Very good, and of course, uh, uh, it should be mentioned also, although he's not up for election this time, you have another brother who's a judge, that's Greg. That's correct. And Greg uh, is uh, sitting in probate court. And my favorite president of the Water Reclamation District, of course, is your brother Terry. That's correct. <laughs> That's only because he, he didn't leave you down in the deep tunnel, that's why. No, that, that's, that's correct. And, and, you know. So, um, number 230 is your punch number? Yes, it is, Abby. So, I want to urge everybody to punch 230 and also do your homework, because really, like, the vast majority, more than the vast majority of these people, you know, are definite yeses. And, um, you know, I guess that's why they're running the judicial retention thing. Matter of fact, maybe you ought to start with the judicial retention when you, um, when you go and um, you know from there on in um, from there on in uh, you know vote for the rest of the races so I want to thank very much uh, judge thank you, Abby. thank you gentlemen have a great right. have a great weekend thank you very Goodbye. much and, bye Billy and that is our last call and guest from here on in it's going to be strictly conversation we have no other people that we invited so uh, it was great to hear from Billy and, and you know what one of the things I saw him and by the way it a lot of these judges are shy. I invited guys like Jack Fleming and, and Judge Sutker Dermer. Um, Judge Fleming, as a matter of fact, had a set. What he said was um, that he's not sure what uh, he's doing yet because his wife hasn't told him this Sunday. So, <laughs> well, well they're would. not going to a bear game. That we know for sure. No, there's definitely no bear game. And that's one of the nice things about doing the call-in show today is I'm not missing the bears game either because <laughs> we're actually editing afterwards. And for the guys in the studio, there's no other calls we're taking from anybody. But uh, thank you. You know, well, in terms of... Uh, well, wait, if Senator Silverstein calls, then we'll take his call. <laughs> well, I, we have somebody else. I mean, I've got a thing here that says there's a judge on the phone. I don't even want to say the name because, um, you know, it might be another practical uh, joke or something. Mm. So one thing I do want to talk about, I want to just take a quick break from election, and I want to talk about Can TV real quick because there's something very important happening Friday, uh, and, and Can TV's funding was threatened. Uh, to the point where we might lose 25% of our funding here. And, um, you know, everybody's being urged to show up at City Council. That's Friday, October 31st, Alderman Stone? That's right. And what time? Well, the, the, the Finance Committee, I, I believe, is meeting, I think, at 11 o'clock. It, it, it might be 10 o'clock. I'm not sure, but... What well, you are, should call CAN TV then at 312-738-1400. Yeah. I, I don't know what time the matter will come up itself. Um, 
but it's an ordinance that's, that currently has something like 35 sponsors. Uh, the principal sponsors are myself and Norman Burke. Um, it really restates the, uh, the current funding and makes a statement with respect to the, uh, the, the, uh, new, that the new state law uh, which uh, granted the uh, funding from, uh, from AT&T um, on their franchise and, and indicates that the 1% uh, for coming from AT&T uh, will go to CAN. Um, there's going to be perhaps a little, a little dispute between uh, the cable commissioner and myself over that one percent. Uh, I've already. I, she she uh, indicated she she's unhappy with our draft, uh, and I've asked her to to prepare a substitute, which I will introduce. Um, her problem with with the uh, with the one percent is that the way the state law is written. Uh, it is written so that other bodies other than can <coughs> might be entitled to a, a portion of that one percent. And the way we've uh, written the uh, ordinance, can would get all of the one percent. Which I'm all in favor of. And um, I have no objection to it either. Yeah, but, and, and but uh, by the way, we well, go ahead. I'm sorry. But but. Uh, other educational or uh, such as, for instance, the City College Channel and others might be entitled to some of the addition, some additional financing out of it. Yeah. But they all have sources of of. Uh, they have direct sources. Yes. So, uh, I I have no objection to it, and and I I'm sure the the my fellow uh, colleagues that. that Co-sponsored it would would uh, like to see uh, Can get that one percent because Can has always uh, had a problem meeting their their budget and Can has a very low budget considering what what they ha what they need uh, for in funding. Um, the cable commissioner and I uh, are are good friends and I get along very well with her. Uh, we have our disagreements, as all people do, but I feel that uh, I told her to go pre prepare the substitute, and we'll just put the substitute on the floor. Um, I may may not ex take all of the substitute. I may change that par portion of it. But in any event, uh, she, she, uh, she didn't like the wording in, in the restatement of the current financing. She felt it it uh, it wasn't properly drafted, and I and I told her to properly draft that portion of it. So let me urge everybody: uh, you should call Can TV three one two seven three eight one four hundred. I know they're they're organizing people for this Friday, October thirty first, to come down. And um, of course, we have a regular show. I have a regular show on Can TV that I do with Sunny's Health. It's on every Thursday at seven thirty, Friday at two thirty. Uh, the Northtown News Magazine. And by the way, we actually have a studio audience today, Alan Crown, who, who you brought all to <laughs> yeah. the stone. No, and who I haven't me? thanked Keith McDonald yet, together with Sonny Hirsch, who's running everything in the studio. And it's very important to do that. But you know what? We've got about 15 minutes left, and we should be talking about elections right now. Can we go back to the judge's Absolutely. retention and follow up on, on what Judge O'Brien? You know, um, th there are a number of people who are up for retention who have connections to the uh, north side into the, the basic area where your, your show started, and I, it might just be worth mentioning them. Sure. One is uh, Dick Elrod, who was the sheriff of Cook County for a long time. My and, boss. And, and you know, uh, lived uh, in the 50th Ward for a long time. Uh, my uh, neighbor and my boss. He is up for retention. Uh, Judge Sebastian Patty, who uh, is uh, one of the presiding judges and comes from uh, the mid-north side, just a little, uh, I think, from the 40... Uh, Seventh, 46th Ward, uh, is a great judge. Judge Sutker Dermer, who's from Skokie and is the presiding judge in the second district courthouse in Skokie, who does a remarkable job and uh, is uh, 
one of the great leaders, Judge Jerry Bender, who was a trustee in Lincolnwood and uh, has been ill, but is from all indications we're getting recovering. And he also uh, does a tremendous amount of pro bono work for uh, the Simon we for Simon Wiesenthal, and he has for many I, decades. In fact, I met I met Simon Wiesenthal with Jerry Bender's help. Oh, and by the wow. way, congratulations to his son Michael, who is uh, just being appointed. sworn in uh, in a few days, right after the election. Right, yeah. uh, Jack Fleming, who you mentioned, who's uh, again Jack's from the Fifth Ward, a great guy. Uh, Sandra Otaka, who was the first Japanese American woman to be elected to the Circuit Court of Cook County, and and comes uh, from the Forty Eighth Ward, and is uh, a wonderful uh, uh, judge sitting. Uh, out in juvenile court. She's really terrific. Uh, and by the way, most of these people you've mentioned have actually been on the show. Right. Uh, Judge Barbara Meyer, who right. is the former Skokie. corporation counsel from Skokie and who sits downtown in the Daily and Center. And president is, of the Decalogue Society. Right, and is really a remarkable uh, lawyer. Uh, and, and Judge O'Brien, who we had on, uh, those are the ones who have north side connections and probably have been on this show right. in the and past. By the way, even though he's not typically a north sider, I want to also say hi to Judge Gordon, who I happen to like in particular. He's oh, a very Bobby interesting Gordon? Person. Bob yes. Gordon is also on the list of people uh, yeah. to run. I mean, there's a lot yeah, of like really good, good people <laughs> who every day do justice in these, in these courtrooms, and it's important to do it. I also think we ought to talk a little bit about the Water Reclamation District. You mentioned oh, Terry O'Brien really being yes. the, uh, the president. There, there is a contested race there. Uh, we have three uh, Democrats who won the, uh, the pr a really hotly contested primary, Frank Avila, Kathleen Meany, and Cynthia Santos. But they have, uh, I think, uh, six people running against them for right, the three spots. Right, there's the Republicans and the Green Party. Oh, and uh, I believe that uh, you've endorsed uh, yeah, uh, Avila, fact, I've Meany, I've and Santos. I've endorsed all three incumbents. Um, well, I, I've actually had both uh, Cynthia Santos and Meany on the show. Avila's got his own franchise here at Can TV. I mean, he's here early and often on the air. Well, that no, that's the son. Well, actually, the father also. Oh, the, the father, is the and, father. And, and the producer of the father's show is the mother of the younger Frank Avila. Okay. So it, right. they, they are quite a family. When and if you run into them here, they. they I are, saw Frank uh, the Jr. The, uh, the last week. Um, so, and, but and, no, all three of them. And, and by the way, this is interesting because the way things have always worked in the past is that, that David Orr, the clerk, is supposed to list them, their numbers in order of experience, with Meany being the most experienced. She's going for her fourth term, um, Santos going for her third term, and Avila going for a second term. But somehow Santos got the first number at 23, even though he's the least senior. And then Meany and, and Avila. Well, Don't they no, usually no, list them by a number of votes? No, it's a to little bit different. You're thinking of it in relationship to some of the other offices. Uh, they're listed here in, by the number, number of votes, votes they the receive primary. in oh. the primary. And, and Frank Avila was the number one vote getter in the water reclamation. Oh, so, that's, oh, so those are the rules now. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we, we urge we urge people to vote for Cynthia that's Santos, Kathleen, and Frank. Right. County commissioners, right. County right. commissioners right. are listed the same way. The, the oh, other it's thing by is number we, of votes. We, we we mentioned a little bit about the general assembly, but we have a number of contested congressional races and a United States Senate race, and we have in Senator Richard Durbin the number two senator in the uh, current Senate and a chance right, I Senate think is, is, is soon to be the, maj the, the majority leader if uh, Harry Reid decides to retire or take another assignment. Yeah, so, Durbin's been terrific. And he's running against uh, four other people. By and, the way, the last time I talked to him was at your picnic about three years yeah, ago. Well, and <laughs> Senator Durbin is a remarkable <laughs> man. Se Congressman Bobby Rush is in a contested race. Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. is in a contested race. Congressman Dan Lipinski is in a contested Contested race. Congressman Luis Gutierrez is in a contested race. Congressman Rahm Emanuel is in a contested race. I think all of those incumbents will win because of the, of, of the coattails. Part of Cook County is in uh, the, the district, the sixth district, which is currently represented by Congressman Peter Roskam. But we have a retired colonel, a woman who served and was part of the team that brought uh, the president of Iraq to justice. Uh, Jill Morgenthaler, uh, she was there with Saddam Hussein at his trial. Uh, she is a remarkable that's, person. That's the race I referred to as one of the races that they had, uh, where they were using uh, really misleading c commercials uh, against her. Yes. The terrible commercial. And, and she represents a good part of Cook County in that district. And, and this is where Tammy Duckworth ran two years ago and almost beat Congressman Roskam. I think. There will be a Barack Obama effect in that race. I hope so. Danny sure. Davis is running in a contested race. Melissa Bean's in a contested race. I think both of them are doing very well. 
Uh, our Jan Schakowsky, a Northside uh, representative, is in a contested race against two people who are on the ballot, uh, and a, a Republican and a Green Party person, and a write-in. But again, I think that she's doing very well. And then, uh, not a Chicago race, but Dan Seals versus Kirk. And if you're watching any television today on the commercial side, all you're going to do is see ads for that race. Oh, it is. There are those commercials on both sides, just beneath the belt, below yeah, the well, belt. Well, and, and <laughs> I, I was with uh, Speaker Pelosi this week with Dan Seals, and you know they are very optimistic that Dan Seals, because of the effect of a uh, Barack Obama coattails, will will do very well, and he's a, a really impressive candidate. And many of you remember his father was a Chicago Bear, sure. was yeah. an interior lineman. Also, uh, Judy Biggert's uh, seat in the 13th district, which represents part of Cook County, Scott Har Harper is a, a really strong candidate. And the final congressional race that we're getting a lot of TV ads for, and again, one that Speaker Pelosi. Uh, said this week she felt very good about is Senator Debbie Halverson, who is the uh, majority leader of the Illinois Senate, running against Marty Ozinga, who is uh, an executive in a family business. But those congressional races are as important as anything else. Electing a president without having the right Congress to work with isn't going to make it easy for oh, I, I think you're going to have a President uh, Obama if he becomes should be president. This the most liberal Senate Congress presidency of, of all time. Uh, by the way, one thing I'll just say, my own personal plug is for Mark Kirk um, in 10. I happen to like him. He's been a great friend of Israel and the Jewish community. And Seals is good. Don't get me wrong. He'll be a great <laughs> friend of Israel and the Jewish community. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Steve Green, speaking yeah, of the prejudiced. Jewish community, Steve Greenberg, of course, is running against Melissa Bean. And um, I I'm prejudiced. <laughs> At least in this particular case, but um, that's why you, this isn't a rehearsed <laughs> show. You just found out. No, everybody gets their own opinion. That's one of the things I like about the show in general. And thanks for showing the slides, Sonny, uh, and, and, and uh, Keith. But you know what? The, the 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 thing is that everybody gets to say, everybody gets to say, say everything about. Did you, know, you like, notice how many? How, how you know, Did you notice how many names he read? There were former members of the city council. I, I did. I. Uh, yeah, actually quite a few. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, well, definitely Commissioner Sefford and definitely knows the, the people around here and then some, about as thoroughly as just about anybody. So that's for sure. Um, you know, one of the things I want to mention also, I think it was great that um, j even though the, the circuit court judges are running uncontested, I, I want to particularly congratulate Judge Hyman, the first Jewish judge to be elected countywide in a dozen years, as long as I'm on the Jewish topic. and um, Since... Uh, Judge Sucker, Sucker Derber, 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 right. right yeah. <laughs> and uh, that had a lot to do with the, I mean, that was such a strange election. It, it's sort of like Anita Alvarez, where, where four or five people split the rest of the vote. Including me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I voted for you for uh, state's attorney. I'm, I'm not hiding that. I happen to like Anita Alvarez. We all do. I like her, too. But I voted for you for state's attorney. There's no question about it. Yeah. No, she'll make a great state's attorney. She's a very fine person. Yeah, that she will. She will. As a matter of fact, you know, it's funny because I think Pareko would have been the one Republican to have a shot. Um, against against Democrats, depending on who ran, because he is a popular guy, and he can point to whatever. But but with, in, in the case of Anita Alvarez, he, or, or you either, he can't exactly point to connections with, um, you know, you know, Demo, you know, unsavory Democrats. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, and and you know, I'm, uh, I think that he's really running against Todd Stroger, not running against Anita Alvarez. And, and he you know has what? I think you should have held off for two years, years and run yeah. against. Um, Run against Stroger next time, and that this. Well, if Stroger is the candidate, I, my guess is that uh, the Democratic primary will give us a different candidate for to run against the Republican in 2010. Just like we'll have a different candidate my, for governor my, than my the guess, incumbent. My guess is that Stroger will not even be the Democratic candidate. Right, exactly. I agree with you. Yeah, I don't see how he could possibly be elected. McGoy, which is another person, McGoy has what a 13 percent approval rating right now. Yeah. Right, but only 10 percent of the people saying he should be reelected. So I, mean, he, I, I don't even see why he would attempt to run. I know you he said he's he going to turn it around, but uh, I don't think it's possible. So, g given that I can't see Barack Obama not winning, who, who does Bogoyevich appoint for senator? Well, I think that that's an interesting thing. It's it's like this uh, new movie that's out that where. One voter gets to decide who's the president yeah. of the United States. There's only one vote, and it's it's Rod Bogoyevich's, and I think you're going to have to uh, talk what, to him. What if he appoints himself? That's you know that's a, it's a possibility. You think that'll get him out of trouble with the uh, feds? I don't think so. <laughs> I, you know, I I don't know what's going through his head. I mean, you know, he. I don't people, think anybody else. People does have either. talked about Congressman Jackson as a possibility. Yeah. Congresswoman Schakowsky as a possibility. Tammy Duckworth. Uh, as a possibility. I heard the other day 
uh, that Sen the Senator Emil Jones was promoting Ra uh, Kwame Raoul, who replaced Barack Obama in the state Senate. It would be interesting to replace him in the U.S. Senate. Mm. Uh, Donnie Trotter's name, a uh, state senator from the South Side, has been uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, Congressman Gutierrez's name has been mentioned. So I don't know what the criteria are that the, the governor will use, but well, that actually, certainly will become the number one political guessing game after November 4th. If well, you no normally, um, the, if, if there were normal circumstances, he would listen to whoever Barack would, would, would uh, right. recommend. But knowing, knowing the governor, that doesn't mean a thing to him. No, he... Particularly in as much as he feels he was slighted during the convention. Well, and being slighted now, you know, some of the, the, the campaign ads in the Halverson race that the Democratic uh, Congressional Campaign Committee has put on not Gozinga for contributing to Rod Bogoyevich. Oh. It's the first time we've ever seen the Democratic Party go after a Democratic sitting governor in a congressional That's race. Interesting. So. Now, you know what would be interesting strategy for Bogoyevich is what if he appointed Patrick Fitzgerald to the Senate, and that would take him away from uh, trying to... I, I, I don't think that don't that'll, think happen. that'll happen. I, I don't either. think that'll happen. I would tend to doubt it. Yeah. I would but, tend to doubt uh, it. I, I would think that right now uh, his favorite would, would, would be Tammy Duckworth. Uh, because uh, he he pushed her forward, and right now I would I would say that she would be his favorite, um, but who knows? With him, I would I would never attempt to guess. Right. You know, I I think whoever he appoints, he's looking for someone who would help him as he runs for re-election. Yeah. And uh, Tammy Duckworth would help with veterans. Uh, he, he, uh, she would potentially help with the Asian vote. Be, uh, but I, I, I don't know that uh, he, he's thinking that far ahead. And again, you know, I, I, the Kevin Costner movie where Kevin Costner was the one vote that counted and everybody courted is exactly what we're playing here. And we have a governor who is shown to be totally unpredictable uh, in the things that he does. And uh, uh, so I, I don't know if anyone's going to have any insight into this. Yeah, you think that? You know, I, I don't know. He's, he's really thinking about running, which is amazing. Well, uh, well, he's raising money. Clearly, he's thinking about running. I mean, I don't think any incumbent gives up their office easily. Have you ever seen anybody? No. I mean, you know, if someone gets sick, that's one thing. But, you know, I, I think that clearly, from the governor's perspective, I think he feels he's doing a good job, that he is the health care governor, that he, he is the governor who cares about education because he's, he's struggling with the legislature. He feels that's the legislature's fault and that he's exposing a flaw in Illinois government. But you know, from his perspective, I think he, he does, he's confused by why his numbers are so in low. In 1976, when Richard J. Daley died, uh, his successor that the city council chose was Michael Bolandic. And in his acceptance speech, he said he would not run for mayor. And we all laughed. Okay. And, needless, and of course, he needless needless to say, mayor. he ran for mayor. Right. And the reason we laughed is exactly what Larry just said. Yeah. Anybody who has the office isn't going to give it up at this point. We're, we're down very low time wise. First of all, I want to thank I want to thank Sonny Hirsch, whose production this is. It's a Sonny Hirsch multimedia production, and Keith McDonald, our studio and Alan Crow, but most importantly, our excellent co-host today, uh, Alderman B Bernie Stone and Commissioner Larry Sufferden. And um, neither one of them is up for election this time. I'm Avi Myers, your host. Uh, watch our regular show. Go to our website, ntnm.org, free issue of Jewish Chicago, all over the place. If you don't see it at the newsstand, if you go to ntnm.org, you will be able to read the whole thing for free on the web. And, um, of course, our regular TV show, they're all available on YouTube. Early voting till October 30th. Show up in City Council October 31st in order to help the Can TV uh, piece of legislation. And at this point, I think we're really running out of time, and you guys should probably start running the credits because. Um, October 31st or 30th? Pardon? Was it the 30th or the 31st? 31st. It's Friday the 31st for City okay. Council. It's, it's Halloween. You'll call Can TV at 312 400 for the. Um, That's scary. For the Finance <laughs> Committee. And thank everybody for being here. And uh, hey, we hope to, to be here again soon for another live show. Thank you so much, everybody, and bye bye.